Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Muhammad Faiz bin Ahmad I'm from JBA 1143H Okay, so for today Me and my team are going to share with all of you About Syariah Compliant Funds As we know, Syariah Compliant Funds Are investment funds governed by the requirement of Syariah law And the principle of the Muslim religion Syariah Compliant Funds are considered to be a type of socially responsible investing we can break it down the Sharia compliant funds into a few social responsible funds such as environmental, social and governance, universe and the fund screen potential portfolio investment for specific requirement desired by the follower of the Muslim religion. Some of the requirements of a Sharia compliant fund include the exclusion of investment which derive the majority of their income from the sale of alcohol, pork products, pornography, gambling, military equipment or weapons. And other characteristics of a Sharia compliant fund include an appoint Sharia board, an annual Sharia audit and purifying certain prohibited types of income such as interest by donating them to a charity. The biggest Sharia compliant funds example that exists in the world is Amana Growth Funds. It seeks a long-term capital growth through investment adhering to Islamic principles. The fund was launched on February 3, 1994. And the Amana Growth Fund is a mutual fund that investing at least 80% of their asset in a common stock. And as of November 2017, it has 1.7 billion in total asset under the management. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Sufaka Aiman bin Zulkanain and now I want to talk about why we need to choose Islamic finance. First and foremost, we as a Muslim, we need to find a halal resource stated in Al Quran Al Baqarah, which is uh, verse 1968 and 1969, which say that consume only the good source and don't you follow the devils okay this is mean that we need to do things or we need to buy things in our transaction uh, in the good way and avoid all the bad things why to choose islamic finance it is because islamic finance uh, differs than others uh, finance because it's the interest is prohibited there are zero interest or zero risk in our uh, in islamic finance which is that they said uh, all the risk, all the share, all the profit shared by the owner and which is the business itself is tethered and fully on trust of others. Islamic finance has a lower risk because Islamic banks does not allow any speculation or uncertainty risk taking as is prohibited under Sharia. So we will know that our uh, finance or our stock is free from any speculation, any excessive speculation or whatsoever. And lastly, Islamic compliance stock has a better positive proof than not Sharia compliance stock. This is show that most of the compliance Sharia stock is free from any speculation and thus that means that the proof is pure only uh, state on the performance of the company. Okay Fayyad. We have no what is Islamic finance and we have no what is uh, the benefit or the advantage of Islamic finance. And now I want to ask you, uh, do you know the instrument that used in the Islamic finance or the system or the things that Islamic finance use? Okay. Uh, usually, when we talk about Islamic investment finance, mm -hmm. uh, automatically pop up in our minds about suku. But actually, I'm not very expertise in that field. But I think Megat can help us. So right. let me call Megat. Okay. Hello. Oh, yeah, Payat. Hello. Megat. Can you explain to us about suku? You want me to explain about suku? Suku refers to certificates of equal value which evidence undivided ownership or investment in the asset using Sharia principles and concept endorsed by the Sharia Advisory Council. Think of suku as Islamic bonds. They are structured in a way to generate returns to investors. They are issued and traded in compliance with the principles of Sharia, which prohibit 
riba or interest. When you buy bonds, you are essentially loaning money to the issuer for a fixed period of time. You will receive a predetermined interest rate, which is actually paid annually within the fixed time frame. The value of the bond is repaid at the end of the period and you, you get your money back. However, because Syariah law prohibits the generation of money from money, such as interest or riba, financial instruments that are that are involved the trading and selling debts, and conventional loan lending, which includes conventional bonds, are not permissible. There are five types of suku. First, Bodaroba, a profit sharing contract between two parties, an investor, and the issuer. Our profits in the venture will be shared based on the pre-agreed profit sharing ratio. However, in the case of loss, all will be borne by the investor unless it was due to negligence or mismanagement of the venture where the loss will then be, be borne by the issuer. Second, Musharoka, a partnership between two or more parties to finance a business venture. All parties contribute capital to it either in the form of cash or kind of for the purpose of financing this venture. The profits for the venture will then be distributed based on the pre-agreed profit sharing ratio. However, losses are shared based on the basis of capital contribution. Third, Murabaha, a contract of a sale and purchase of assets where the cost and the profit margin, the market price are made known to all. Next, Alwakala. In general, it is a contract in which a party authorizes another party, usually an agent or wakil, to act on behalf of the former based on the agreed terms and condition as long as he or she is alive. Here, a wakil could be appointed to manage the wakala portfolio with the aim to generate an agreed upon profit return. Lastly, Ijaro, a contract where the owner of an asset leases it up to a leasee at an Agreed lease with rental for the predetermined lease period. However, the ownership of the asset itself is not transferred and will always remain with the lesser. If you want to know about challenges in Suku, I will tell you. The market for Suku is now maturing and there is an increasing momentum in the wake of interest from issuers and investors. A growing investor base also validates Suku's viability as an alternative means to mobilize medium medium to long term savings and investments also investing in something with underlying assets is always more comforting countries that have issued suku include bahrain brunei egypt gambia indonesia iran kazakhstan kuwait pakistan qatar saudi arabia singapore somalia turkey united arab emirates united kingdom and hong kong However, one drawback is that each country have their own interpretation of what is Sharia compliant and what is not, and such interpretations may vary across the board. Such differences between Sharia and other legal perspectives can sometimes result in complication. Mm, I think that's all that I know about suku. So I will I will find some space or time to share more about suku when I have more knowledge. I think I must do more research. Thank you Fayyad and Zul for having me to explain about Suku. I'm sorry if there's any mistakes. You can always refer to me if there's any question. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. My name is Megat Muhammad Nazrin bin Megat Muhammad Nasrin. I'm from JBA 114 4H.